This week on the podcast is another fact or fiction. Is it fact or fiction that lemon juice will help me pass my kidney stones? The following is designed to entertain and inform, not provide medical advice. Always consult your doctor before starting any treatment. Spire. Welcome back to the Kidney Stone Diet Podcast, the show about reducing your kidney stone risk and living your best life. I'm your host, the fellow student, Jeff Saris. And I'm Jill Harris, your kidney stone prevention nurse. Happy to be here. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, lemons, lemon juice, uh, citric, citric acid, all of the things that sort of tie into that. Definitely another one of those just uh, common... Uh, Conceptions, and I didn't conception, that's not the right word, but common sort of uh, views. Assumptions, notions, Assumption, there you go. treatments, all of the things. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I think this is a good one to go, especially paired with the cranberry juice from last week. I think this is a um, just sort of that next logical step. Like, is it true that lemon juice can help pass? This, the lemon, the whole lemon thing, and people who have been around the block with me for a while, they're going to be like, oh, shit, here she goes about lemon. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have got to realize that I come at this as, you know, somebody who has stage four cancer and, and a patient, me, who wants real information, not cock a bull do, okay? I want real information. I want to know that things are going to help what I got. I don't want misinformation. I do not want that. So meaning I get a little mama bear protective about this for kidney stone formers. There's all these generic orders for patients to suck on lemons. If you see anything on the internet, it will generically tell you about kidney stones it will say, you better suck on a lemon. You better. If you want to prevent kidney stones, drink lemon juice. Doctors will generically, I love all the doctors, but they will generically, without doing a 24-hour urine collection, tell patients to suck on a lemon. The reason I'm annoyed by this is because a couple different things. Patients will think, that if they suck on a lemon, that is all they need to do because that's all they've been told. And I know this because of working with patients for 25 years. And they have said, I thought I was doing everything. They told me to suck on a lemon and that would be it to prevent kidney stones. So the patient didn't do any part of the diet, the kidney stone diet. They didn't lower their sodium. They didn't lower their sugar. They didn't lower the uh, oxalate. They didn't. And of course, they're still making stones. You must do a 24-hour urine collection to see if lemons would be helpful to you. Lemons can provide you with more citrate. Citrate is a natural stone inhibitor, meaning it will help. It will create an environment in your urine that will uh, lessen your stone risk, but only if you need it. Some of you are walking around with a really high urine pH and your citrate, by the way, is absolutely fine. Lemons are not going to do a thing for you. The, the question was, before I go off my crazy path, the question was specifically, because we have a, a hoozy on will lemons dissolve kidney stones. This is specifically, will lemons help pass my kidney stones? No. No. Lemons are not going to help you pass kidney stones. Water will help you pass kidney stones. Drinking copious amount of waters while water while you're so say a stone's on the move. You definitely do want to drink some water to help flush that out, to help it along. You putting lemon in there ain't making it go any faster. So that's what I want to be very clear about. We're not talking about dissolving. Uh, kidney stones here. The question is, will lemons help pass a kidney stone? No. People will say, 
Yes, it did, Jill. I was drinking lemon water all day long, and that lemon helped pass my stone. No, it didn't. The water helped pass your stone. Just so happened that lemon was in it. Could have been bourbon in that. Could have been a tangerine in that. Doesn't matter. It was the water. It was the excess fluids that helped pass your kidney stone. That is that is the thing there. So, but lemons can be useful in kidney stone prevention if your citrate is just a little low. If it's really low, a lemon ain't going to hit you. You need a potassium citrate pill, uh, sodium bicarb. You need other ways to get it up there. Also, just drinking lemon juice as a prevention measure. Many of you are walking around with a high urine pH. This can increase your risk for calcium phosphate stones, especially if you also have high urine calcium. Two things you'd never know you had unless you did a 24-hour urine collection, and this is why you need to get them. So don't generically take lemons as a prevention unless you know you need them. Lemon juice is not helping you pass kidney stones. The fluids in general are, and, you know, if you're drinking a lot of water that day and adding a little lemon juice in there because you're sick of drinking water and you want to taste something else, uh, fine, okay? But it's not helping you pass a kidney stone. Does that make sense, Jeff? Yeah, it absolutely does. And you mentioned uh, citrate. Does uh -huh. that, um, obviously, you need to get your tests to yes. know sort of what your levels are. Does that apply more to specific types of stones or is it across the board where it can help if you're low? Any kidney stone former, it can, it's, so citrate is a molecule in the body and in kidney stone disease, what it does is it protects calcium in your urine. It's like a little shield protecting calcium. And so when your calcium is covered with this citrate shield, then other crystals cannot connect to her, like oxalate, phosphate, all the other things that are making up these calcium-containing stones. Because people say, I make calcium stones. It's bound with something else. It's just not a calcium stone. It's calcium phosphate or calcium oxalate. And up to 80% of stones are calcium oxalate in nature. And so some people are making kidney stones because they have too much calcium in their urine, that's very common. That's why kidney stone patients all have also also can have osteopenia or osteoporosis because they're losing calcium and this excess calcium's in their urine. If you don't have enough citrate, you have this unprotected calcium and the oxalate crystals and phosphate crystals are looking to connect to her. So the doctor will then say drink some crystal light, add some lemon to your water. If it's just the citrate's just a little low, those two things will just bring it up so much. And then potassium citrate is used. It's a big pill. Um, and it's used to increase people's citrate that is very low. So that will bring it up. And then the calcium is protected by the shield so these crystals cannot connect to her. Okay, so they can't form a stone. The other reason uh, some of these things are included is if you make uric acid stones, lemon can help dissolve those type of stones. Lemon can also increase your pH if it's low. Diabetics, people who have malabsorption issues, they can benefit from that. But you have to have a urine collection to see if these things are a problem for you. Because if not, you could be adding more problems for yourself, but you wouldn't know that because you haven't done a urine collection. And I know people must get sick of me, but but if I had somebody giving telling me what test is vital for you to do, I would be like, okay, I'm doing that. Please get your doctor to order that for you. Many doctors will say, oh, let's wait for the second stone to do a urine test. Why would we ever, ever Put a patient through another stone episode before we started preventative measures. Why would we do that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I think, you know, I've had doctors tell me, look, Jill, I do urine collections, but nobody wants to change their lifestyle. And so there's no point in putting the patient through that. The doctor is not wrong. Many of you may just watch these shows, but never do anything about it. 
And it is a problem in our society, especially since we have so much on the internet. Collecting content, reading, you know, we join things, we get a book, we look at YouTube, but we actually, consuming content does nothing for us unless we take action. You can't consume content and think you're going to help yourself in any kind of way. That's the beginning to get the information needed to create the action plan. So I'm begging you as a patient myself with my own illness, when I read something, something that could be beneficial for me, I put that plan into action. Sometimes not right away, because maybe I'm not willing to do it. What am I, a, a superstar? No, I mean, I'm human. It takes me. But, but if I find something with good literature behind it and success rates from other people and science and all the things, um, and here's, because I get a lot of naysayers with this. Well, Jill, I drank this and it helped me. There ain't no science. It's not always about science. These doctors just want to make money. No, they don't. These guys are surgeons. There's always going to be millions of kidney stone patients. They don't need your money, okay? I promise you, doctors are not in the business to keep you sick. And I know people think that and patients say that, but I really, it makes me mad. We, we medical people are not in the business to keep you sick. We're not. So lay off that kind of thinking. Please feel free to write negative comments. Uh, I, I will, uh, you know, I just, I have no tolerance for that. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not good thinking. Doctors don't want to keep you sick. They don't have the knowledge, perhaps, about diet stuff, okay? But what I'm giving you is the knowledge to, with the things they may not know because they're surgeons, I'm giving you that knowledge so you can go back to your doctor's appointment and say, I want a 24-hour year. Ah, you don't need that. I want it, and here's what you say. I'd like it, dear doctor, because I never want to make a kidney stone again, and I will do everything you tell me to do based upon those results. So when the doctor has an eager patient, that doctor will write that script for the test. I, I rarely had doctors say no once the patient advocated for themselves. And if you, if you advocate for yourself and the doctor still says no, time for second opinion. Time for second opinion, because kidney stones can be prevented in most cases. I've been doing this 25 years. I see what, what, what my patients have done. They've transformed their whole lives, lower their A1C, get off their blood pressure medications, feel so much better, migraines just because they're eating better, all kinds of things, no longer obese. Is it a miracle the kidney stone diet goes? No. The kidney stone was the worst thing they've ever experienced, despite all the other medical conditions they have, and they never want to go through that pain again. They, they work their butt off. They lower their weight. They lower their kidney stone risk because they have an important reason why now. It's not just looking cute in their shorts for summer. It's March. People are writing me, Jill, what can I do? I got, I got my daughter's wedding. I got this. That's not long-term weight loss. You have to be scared. In most cases, we human beings have to be hit up over our head to make a change. And when we're scared enough, we start it. We just start listening. We start advocating. We start saying, never again. I'm done. It ain't about looking cute. It's about your health. It's not about... You lose weight, people, to gain health. That's why you lose weight, to gain health, okay? Not to look cute. It's going to be a second, it's going to be, it, it, it's a nice little side effect. But you have to have an important reason why. And my patients are successful because they never want to go through that pain again. They never want to have a stent. They never want to have another ureteroscopy. They never want to have sepsis. They never want to be in the ICU. So they make a change. It's like, you know, the smoker who has lung cancer. Oh, shit, let me put that out. Yeah. We human beings, we're, change is hard, folks. So lots of times it takes, uh, you know, it takes a lot to want to make a change. I learned a lot of my life after cancer. I wasn't a nun. You know, I made a lot of changes, emotional changes, all kinds of changes, because I got so scared. It's like one of those moments, it's like, oh, dear Lord, or whoever you believe in, give me one more chance to make some shit right. 
And for some reason, I got that chance. And I'm making shit right now in my life. But it took me thinking I was dying. So I don't want anybody here, too, by the way, to think, oh, look at her on her high horse. I say that. My mom used to always say those things. So it's stuck in my brain. I'm still working on my emotional thing. I don't want anyone to think that I got it all down. I put work into what I do every single day to be a better human being because I don't want to get sick like that again. And when you have stage four cancer, it comes back. It's already come back once. You know, I've had cancer a, a couple times, different cancers. So uh, three different cancers. So uh, you have to be scared sometimes to make real changes. I've always been pretty healthy eater. I've always cared about exercise. But, uh, you know, other things in my life, I had to make some changes too. And I have, but it took me a lot. And don't be like me. Don't, don't wait for three, four, seven stones. A lot of you guys do. Please don't. Do something now so you never have to go through all the hell that I just listed that many patients do. Ask for a urine collection. Pay attention to the goals of the diet. It will help any other medical issue you have, pretty much. Um... And treat your body as a machine. Be grateful for it, what it does for you every single day. And feed your mind with things that are going to make you motivated to take care of your body. If you're hanging around somebody that's caustic to you, get rid of them. Sometimes it's hard. could be a family member. Do your best to surround yourself with good, loving people that value, care about you, know that you're worth something. All those things. And I know I'm getting off. We're talking about lemon juice. But all of this plays into lifestyle. So advocate for yourself, folks. If no one's offering you uh, preventative plans for kidney stone, listen to what we're asking you to do. Go get it done. Don't just listen and go back to your life. Action is what you need to make change. All right, Jeff, I'm done. Yeah, yeah and that's the thing is finding the people to support you, to uplift you which that's why the kidney stone prevention group exists on Facebook. That's why the group coaching calls with Jill exist. You can surround yourself either free or premium, but you can surround yourself with people who've experienced similar things to you, maybe not exactly the same, but they're also there to let you know that there's a, a bright side. There, oh, there is yes. a destination is brighter than maybe where you are right this moment, but it's so important to, to understand that and also have the support to stick to habit change because like you said habit change is so difficult so to have someone or many someone's in your corner can make all the difference oh yeah you know we have the kidney stone uh group calls and that's where you know there's a lot of people people get together and we're talking about health we're talking about lifestyle we're talking about recipes we're talking about anything you want to talk about kidney stone stuff of course but there's a lot of people in there who want to continue to wait uh, lose weight. And it's a supportive group. You know, there's a lot of people that don't have support at home. So you're in a community. I and Jeff too, we love fostering community. That's what we love. And so in those group calls, I have three of them a week. And we're talking about, look, it's not just about not eating a cookie. It's about what's causing you stress in your life. And then that stress is causing you to binge eat or whatever. It's about let's deal with the emotional aspect of what's going on. And what can we do instead of using food as a coping skill? So it's a very loving, supportive group. It's the highlight of my week, those calls. And everybody that's in it, we've been in them for a long time, so we know each other. We love having new people, though, because, you know, it's just... Whatever we're going through in life, and especially illness, it's so important not to feel alone. It can be so isolating and so depressing, and it's just scary if you've been sick. It's really an anxiety-producing. So it's just a place where people can go for, what is it, Jeff? We charge $24 a week a yeah, month? So. It's $6 yeah. a week. Whatever it is, it's like, and there's six hours worth of calls in there. I literally give those away. So, but it's so valuable. Um, and, you know, whether you do it, go there or go to the Facebook group or whatever, I, whether you write a comment in this YouTube channel, we like, we like community. That's what we're trying to foster here. Me being a sick person and ha having to deal with sickness, I know what it's like. Sometimes you're stuck in your house or you're anxious about what you should and shouldn't do. I know I live the life, so I get it. So that's why it's important for me to, you know, somebody said, Jill, 
why are you always answering all the comments that you get? You know, there's this thing on social media where, what is it, cool not to answer comments? I don't get it. If you go to people, and I get it, there's some people that have just thousands of comments. They can't answer all that, of course. But, you know, I mean, I think it's really important. Sometimes it takes me a minute between all the platforms and Dr. Coe's site and my website and then YouTube and Insta, Facebook. Oh, my God. But I really believe it's important to provide answers to your questions. So feel free. I'm not, we're not that channel that, you know, you're going to ask something and I'm not going to answer it. I will answer it. So please, if you have any questions and I, I, I can't list, you know, a hundred paragraphs, but a simple question, just put them in the comments and I'll answer you. That's it. I'm done. I know I go off people. I'm sorry. I just get passionate about all this. I don't want people to unnecessarily suffer. And this is why we do so much free stuff. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so if you're interested in the group coaching calls with Jill, with any of the other resources, you can find all of that at kidneystonediet.com. And yeah, we appreciate you leaving comments below, any questions you might have. But if you want to have your voice featured on a future episode, the number is 773-789-8763. And we will uh, feature you and um, everyone else who's left a voicemail as well already. We appreciate each and every one of you. And Speaking of appreciation, we appreciate you for tuning in, for tuning yes. in, for sharing with people who can also benefit from this information, from giving it a thumbs up, from leaving comments, from subscribing to the channel. All of that helps us reach as many people as we can. So we really appreciate it. And I think with that, we will wrap for this week. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.